Welcome to this stock market news update. We're diving deep beneath the surface of what is going on in our financial markets to try to get a good understanding of what is coming next. First, let's take a look at where investors are positioned. Investors are all in on tech and the AI trade. This comes from David Rosenberg. This screams contrarian signal, right? I don't know what would cause the most incredible fundamental assets like Microsoft, Google, which almost have monopolies on artificial intelligence, which make this up to fall other than a massive scare in the markets, right? But the fact is when everyone is this levered long a position, historically, it's always a selling opportunity. Do the opposite of what the crowds are doing. They, I love this. Maybe there's some antitrust issues coming down the pipeline for these big tech companies. You never know, but market makers, big whales look at this and they say it is way too easy to cause a massive stampede out of this position, right? And so somehow, somewhere, this position will get squeezed just based on the massive amount of people just crowded in, right? S&P 500, let's take a look at the relative strength index. This comes from Don Durrett. So the relative strength index below in purple, whenever it reaches levels like it is right now, it is practically always a selling opportunity. So just look at every time the green arrow goes down and look at the chart, it is always a selling opportunity. Now it might not be that big of a selling opportunity, right? It might just have a short dip down and the bull market continues like all through 2021, that's possible but at least one scary sell-off event to shake out some of the levered longs in the short term. And then here's another way of looking at it. Average funding spread in the red line. When this goes up, again, people are using leverage long products. So the first spike at January, 2022, you can see the red line is up. The blue line is up. The S&P 500 is up. So S&P 500 in blue, the red line levered long funding spreads high. What happened after that? We had a meltdown in financial assets. Same thing happened in July. We had a bit of a meltdown and now we're right back up, right? So the market does seem ripe for a short-term pullback. Now, why did the market go up to begin with? It's all traced back to liquidity, right? We know this. When interest rates are high, markets crash. And when the Fed is printing money and interest rates are low, markets pump. Well, liquidity is a great measure of that. And so what we can see in the current most recent move in November, 2023, liquidity went up, right? Now, before that, from July to November, liquidity was down. And so what this is, according to Yuri and Timmer, this comes from Fidelity, what he's saying is the big factor in the market strength these days is improving liquidity. Despite contraction in the Fed's balance sheet, this is the result of money market funds choosing to buy treasury bills instead of using the Fed's reverse repo program. With money market funds sniffing out a turn in the Fed cycle, the reserve repo program is shrinking fast. It's as if the Fed is not doing any quantitative tightening, right? Markets are perfectly correlated to liquidity. You can see when this thing topped out, we were at the top of the market at the end of 2021. Then it crashed, came down in 2022, and now it bounced a little bit and we're seeing an uptick in assets, right? So the previous charts are correlated to this move in liquidity. Again, would it be surprising if this goes back down in the near term just to shake out some longs? No, right? Now, long term, obviously, will the US government print money? Will liquidity be infused into the system? Yes. So long term, we're bullish markets, obviously. We're just talking short term. And then in the intermediate term, seems like we, we have a storm coming straight at us in 2024 and 2025, proxy Fed funds rate leads net interest payments by two years, right? So in red, we see the federal funds rate. We know they spiked interest rates and that's crashed markets. It suffocated the real estate market. It crashed the tech market, the IPO market. Well, in black, we see net interest payments as a percentage of corporate profits. Corporations, people, are just starting to feel the bite from this, right? There's a lag effect. So 2024 seems to be the year where high interest rates really bite the economy, right? Here's the default rate of US consumers. This comes from Game of Trades, highest level since 1991. So US consumers are 
delinquent on their credit card loans at the highest level since 1991. People are running out of money, right? So there's a lot of rot in the financial system that these high interest rates are causing. And again, it's looking to bite us in 2024. Now, we're just in a nice honeymoon phase while liquidity is seeping back into the system and people are starting to price in future rate cuts. But those future rate cuts might happen a little too late and the U.S. consumer is strapped. And so that's what we're heading for in 2024, some volatility. Now, another huge catalyst for volatility in 2024 is U.S. Treasury issuance, right? The U.S. government is paying an absolute fortune in interest payments right now. Here is a chart showing how much interest the U.S. government is paying. It is practically at an all-time high, almost a trillion dollars per year. This will bankrupt the United States, right? And so interest rates have to come down for the United States not to go bankrupt. Now, obviously, they won't go bankrupt. They'll just print money, massively inflate the currency to pay it off. But that won't be great for the currency, right? And that won't be great for yields. And so obviously, you know, it doesn't end well when countries are forced to print money like crazy, but that's where we are. And so they're going to have to issue a massive amount of debt in 2024. Again, another catalyst for volatility. And so what we, what we can see here is treasury issue, its growth just going up. Look from 2012 to now, almost a record high in November, right? But again, that's more long-term. In the, in the short term, the market is extremely overbought and Seems like we're we're overdue for a short-term liquidation event where the levered longs get scared out, right? Could be the Federal Reserve's meeting this Wednesday where maybe they throw out some hawkish terminology. It won't take a lot to cause everyone in these massively levered long positions to run for the exits, right? And so any sort of hawkish tone could send us into a short-term sell-off. But in the immediate term, again, we have market forces, not ideal, interest rates catching up, the U.S. consumer feeling it. And then next year, even more volatility. But again, the big unknown is Fed liquidity, right? It's liquidity. How much are they willing to print to prop this market up? And it's just something we're going to have to stay on top of.